Hello, welcome to Psych Boost. In these next three videos, we'll be looking at the factors that affect attraction. So we'll start with a factor, self-disclosure. In this video, we'll define what self-disclosure is. We'll define social penetration theory. We'll discuss the key terms reciprocity, attribution, and appropriateness in relation to self-disclosure. And of course, we'll go on to discuss some value to research and other ways we can extend an evaluation in an essay. One note to make about the word attraction on these videos. We don't just mean attraction in the romantic sense. We talk about attraction more as a feeling of liking someone. Not necessarily, but including being sexually interested in them. So we can talk about attraction in relation to friendships or romantic situations. And if we write an essay, we should try and make the distinction between the two. Particularly if the essay requires us to talk about romantic attraction. We'll go on in a few videos time to talk about theories of romantic relationships. What is self-disclosure? Self-disclosure is when an individual reveals information about themselves to another person. We as individuals tend to disclose more information to those people that we like. And we also like people who reveal more information about themselves to us. Now it's thought the reason for this is to disclose information to someone, especially information that is maybe personal, that you don't want to be put out to other people, shows an indication of trust with that person. Trust that the information you give to them will stay between you two. So of course, there's different types of information that can be shared between two individuals. And Altman and Taylor are suggesting that as a relationship develops over time, the breadth and the depth of the interpersonal communication, the conversations that these two people have, will increase from a shallow level of communication and will slowly become more and more intimate as the relationship improves. So this is called social penetration theory, and increase the breadth and depth of communication over time as relationships improve. What do I mean by breadth and depth? Well, breadth means there are more topics that can be discussed. Certain topics might be completely off limits with strangers, Whereas friends of 20 years, you might be able to talk to them about almost anything. For example, fears for the future, relationship problems, and money issues you wouldn't discuss with someone that you didn't know very well. But it might be a suitable conversation to have with a close friend. Depth of the conversation, how much detail you can go into on any given topic. So with someone that you don't know very well, you might just give them the surface level information. If you went through a particularly bad breakup, you might tell someone you didn't know very well that the relationship had ended, I might give a few indications about the reason why, but to someone that you're very close with, you might go into extreme depth about the full reasons why the relationship ended. That information might be personally quite emotionally painful to you, and if you're only sharing that with your closest friend, that reinforces the depth of friendship between you, because that friend understands that you trust them enough to divulge that information, while that going on to be shared by the wider social network. Reciprocity is a concept the relationship will only develop if both partners are active in this self-disclosure. It doesn't help if one person does all the self-disclosure and the other person doesn't respond. What you expect to see is an individual self-disclose, the other person being active and responding to that self-disclosure with appropriate social cues, and then the other person disclosing in their own way. So when someone self-discloses to us, we do consider the underlying motivations behind the reason they just self-disclose to us. We look for attributions. What do we attribute their self-disclosure too. So if someone's just after attention, if they go around self-disclosing their deepest issues to everyone around them, we're not going to see them as attractive. But if we think that somebody thinks that we're special, and that's the reason that they're disclosing to us, we're going to see that person as much more attractive, because we assume they see value in our relationship. We'd also consider the appropriateness of the self-disclosure to us. We know the term TMI. TMI is the indication that someone's just shared information with you that you really don't want to know. It is generally thought that revealing information is seen as improving relationships. If you break a social norm by talking about something completely inappropriate, discussing it in a way that's completely inappropriate, or more likely, revealing information that's very private far too early in a relationship, this can then have the opposite reaction. This inappropriateness will actually reduce the attraction level at the early starts of relationship. And you can imagine if you're on a first date, there are certain topics which are just not appropriate for that conversation. So of course, financial troubles, conversations about ex-partners, plans for future weddings and children are all conversations that would be too much information 
to put on someone in that first meeting. As the relationship develops though, and trust develops, conversations about those things would be an indication of increasing trust. So a piece of correlational research on self-disclosure. Researchers Spreacher and Hendrick looked at student dating behavior. They used a longitudinal observational study design and they watched these couples on dates and they observed their self-disclosure patterns. They looked at how much self-disclosure there was and they also looked to see if there's a correlation between the amount of self-disclosure and the amount of reported satisfaction that these individuals had in their relationships. They found men and women do self-disclose at about a similar level. They also found a positive correlation between the amount of self-disclosure and measures of the quality of what their relationship was like. So they had higher satisfaction with their relationship, they felt more love, and they had higher commitment levels if they had more self-disclosure. Positive correlation means as self-disclosure goes up, so does the satisfaction rating, love rating, commitment rate. As one covariable increases, the other covariable increases. So what does this data suggest? This does suggest that self-disclosure is reciprocal. Both men and women had similar levels of self-disclosure in order to develop the relationship. And it also indicates that high levels of self-disclosure are in some way linked to the level of attractiveness felt towards a romantic partner because it was linked to the factors of satisfaction, love and commitment. One way we can criticise this research and we can criticise a number of pieces of research on self-disclosure is it's pretty much all correlational. They record the amount of self-disclosure, they record the amount of attraction, but with correlational research, you can't see causal links. It might not be that self-disclosure causes attraction. It could just as easily be the other way around. The more we're attracted to someone, the more we want to self-disclose to them. It's not the self-disclosure that's causing the attraction. It's the attraction causing the self-disclosure. Or maybe there is no link between them. Maybe there's a third factor. Maybe if we share interests with somebody, this leads both to an increased self-disclosure and an increased attraction. But the self-disclosure and the attraction aren't really linked. This lack of evidence of causality in correlational research is something really important to know about psychological research and can be applied to any study that's correlational in nature. Some suggestions of ways you could build your evaluation in this area. First up, it is generally thought that women are better communicators. They might be more willing to share intimate information between them you might then suggest that they have stronger relationships. But in psychology, sometimes we can exaggerate the differences between men and women. So we could suggest that the idea that women are better communicators is an example of alpha bias. And Spreacher and Hendricks research did show that men and women self-disclose to each other in equal amounts. This whole theory about self-disclosure leading to increased attraction might actually be culturally biased. Self-disclosure might be a feature of Western individualistic countries where people place great importance on themselves and being recognized as individuals and the importance of their own experiences. This might not apply to societies which are collectivist in nature, which care more about the unit. In fact, findings by Tang in 2013 seem to suggest that in China, a collectivist society, there's actually higher relationship satisfaction with lower levels of disclosure. So I hope you enjoyed this Psych Boost video. Please, if you haven't already, click subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a like. If you have any questions at all, pop them in the comment box and I'll try and get back to you. If you'd like the free resources that come with this course, I put the posters and some other things into this Dropbox link. Until the next video.